What is going on, everybody? It's the Absolute Answer, Nick Cutler, personal trainer, professional wrestler, amateur bodybuilder, OnlyFans model, Team Gaspari athlete. Make sure you're following me on all forms of social media, Nick Cutler on Facebook, Cutler Coalition on Twitter, N-C-U-T-L-E-R-8869 on Snapchat, Absolute Answer on Instagram, ProWrestlingTees.com forward slash Cutler Coalition for merchandise, GasparriNutrition.com using promo code NHARMON20 for 20% off only fans link is onlyfans.com forward slash absolute answer and let's get right down to it and before i actually begin talking yes i love my wife's tits she gave me this cup yes i'm filming vertically the reason why i'm filming vertically is because i feel like filming vertically because it's easier for me to get an angle of myself if the phone is vertical as opposed to horizontal because i don't have any sort of tripod or anything like that so if you don't like it fuck off um yeah so i wanted to get that out of the way um tea is already mixed and blended and so on and so forth i had somebody comment on my youtube video the other day saying that they were very interested in what i had to say but that the clanking of my spoon against my cup was very annoying so i aimed to please so made sure that the tea was already done and stirred and prepped properly before i started this one today so normally i don't do two in a row but there's a lot to talk about guys uh lots of big releases in wwe today that really rocked the pro wrestling world and it really got me to thinking how my stance has changed so much when it comes to the pro wrestling industry and my thoughts and feelings towards the industry itself and a lot of the people in it um, i've had a lot of people ask me why i seem to have backed off of the level of commitment that I give to the industry and while I definitely still give the same level of commitment for my performances I don't necessarily give the same level of commitment to getting myself to another level and I'm going to get into detail on that momentarily um, yes it's my favorite cup so her cup says I love his muscles, and if you look at this part, I've got my muscles right here, and on my wife's cup, she has the outline of cleavage, so, you know, because I love her tits, so. But let's talk about the releases from WWE today. Um, we've got Braun Strowman. We've got Buddy Murphy. We've got Aliester Black. We've got Ruby Riot, we've got Santana Garrett, and we've got Lana. All incredibly talented individuals, all incredibly hardworking individuals, all individuals who will find their way and succeed in whatever it is that they do in the next chapter of their life. The one that surprised me most, and I think that he's the one that surprised everybody most, was definitely Braun Strowman. Because Braun Strowman is the stereotypical favorite of Vince McMahon, it would seem. He's big, he's tall, he's strong, he's burly. He brings back that raw, powerful masculinity that I really feel is missing in not just the pro wrestling industry, but the world today. The world has become pussified, and so has the pro wrestling industry. And there's a very serious lack of masculinity in it, in my opinion. And Braun Strowman was one of those guys that was just so incredibly physical, you believed that he could just rip somebody limb from limb. Uh, granted, he was responsible for James Ellsworth getting a two-year deal, which I guess I can't blame him for, but love you, Jimmy. Um, but that's beside the point. So, Buddy Murphy, obviously incredibly talented and showed that he was a star once he was given the platform to do so. 
Alistair Black had such an interesting character that could have gone so far in so many different ways. Um, Ruby Riot, <laughs> she's a hell of a performer, and I'll leave it at that. Santana Garrett, a hell of a performer. Lana worked so hard to get better at her craft, and I respect her so much for that. I'm honestly surprised she stuck around for as long as she did after Rusev left. I actually expected her to be let go a lot sooner. Um, I'm glad that she wasn't, but that day, obviously, um, evidently came around. So, um, Alistair Black was a surprise for me as he just returned with a new gimmick and they just put a new shirt up. And, yeah, it, I think a lot of the people that were released today were surprise, were a surprise because of the fact that they're all so talented. Um, from what I've read and from what I've been told with the people who I've spoken with, it all came down to budget cuts and the fact that WWE's first quarterly meeting is coming up here soon. And when you look at what's going out and what's going in by releasing these six superstars, it makes that profit to loss ratio seem a lot better right before the, uh, the sales call. So, um, it sucks. It's a, it's it's business, but nothing that you can do. And all these guys got, from what I've heard, got ninety day no compete clauses, which means they're going to be getting paid for ninety days. So they're taken care of until September, and then after that, I'm sure there's going to be plenty of demand for them, not only on the indies but from other promotions that can offer them full time deals as well. Um, what's going on, Matt? Keith Lee got released as well. Uh, I I have not seen any definitive um, documentation stating that Keith Lee was um, released, but that would not shock me at all. Not because he isn't talented and because he doesn't deserve to be there, but because as of late, he has just seemed very cryptic on social media almost as if he really just doesn't have his heart in it anymore at least with that company so i would not be surprised one bit if lana ends up in aew neither would i um i called it as soon as i saw that lana was released as soon as her 90 days is up she's going to end up joining rusev in aew so And I'm sure, given the type of individual that Lana is, between now and then, she's going to be going even further in um, ensuring that she gets even better. So. Angel Garza, Liv Morgan, and Humberto Carrillo were released as well. Um, don't know a lot about Angel Garza. Don't know a lot about Humberto Carrillo. Liv Morgan would definitely surprise me um, a lot. But again, this is a business. And WWE, I mean, this happens around this time of the year all the time. So it's always a shock to see who they decide to let go. But there is one thing that I really hate, guys. And it is when I see this on Twitter a lot where so-and-so shouldn't have been released. It should have been so-and-so instead. Look, I get that a lot of fans are upset because their favorite might have been let go. But you should never wish that somebody else loses their job. No one wants anybody to be unemployed. No one wants anybody to lose their livelihood. So... You might think that you're sticking up for your favorite by saying, oh, Braun Strowman shouldn't have been released. It should have been Baron Corbin instead. But in reality, you're just showing how much of a heartless asshole you are. So if you're guilty of that, don't do it anymore. So they dismantled the riot squad all in one day. Uh, not all in one day because Sarah Logan's been released for quite some time. So, But Liv Morgan and Ruby Riot, if they release them both, then yeah. Um, 
I had a lot of people, I'm sure most would be employed elsewhere soon. Yeah, like I said, as soon as their 90 day no compete clause is up, I'm sure they'll all pop up someplace else. Um, one of the releases today was a really good friend of mine. I'm not going to name any names. People probably know who I'm talking about if you know anything about me in my past. Um, but I'm not going to name names. It's just how it is. If you don't like it, fuck off. It's my video, my page. Um, one of the releases today was someone who I considered to be a friend. Someone who I have known for over 14 years. Someone who I have been friends with since before she was even involved in the pro wrestling business. And when I saw that she was released, I went to reach out to her to give her my condolences and to let her know, you know, keep your head up, you're always going to land on your feet. And much to my surprise, I found out that I was blocked. Blocked by a friend of over 14 years without being given any sort of context or text message or phone call or anything of that nature to let me know why and it's funny because I posted a status about it and a friend of mine commented why even bring it up and this is why I bring it up guys because I like illustrating from time to time the reason why I'm getting to the point where I'm just so fed up and sick of the pro wrestling industry that I want nothing to do with it anymore. Really, the only reason why I still do this is because I love the fans. I love to perform. And there are some people who I still consider friends. But at the end of the day, the pro wrestling industry is a very dirty business. And 98% of the people that are in it are fake as fuck. And that doesn't really provide a conducive mindset for someone like me who is very, very real. You might hate me for my views, but you can always rely on the fact that my views are my own and you are going to know exactly how I feel. You're never going to have any guesswork. I'm never going to play nice to your face and then talk about you behind your back. I'm not going to play nice to your face and then block you on social media. If you come up to me and say, hey, why did you block me on Facebook? I'm going to say, because you're, you were being a dumbass and this is exactly what I'm talking about. I'm not going to play it off like I don't, under, I don't know why or whatever the case may be. And if I consider you a friend, I'm not even going to block you. I'm just going to let you know that your stance on certain things or the way that you put certain things aren't really cool in my eyes. And then we can discuss that and then we can move on. And that to me is what friends do. You guys saw my video. If you didn't check it out, it's on my YouTube about my falling out with Danny Cage, the owner of the Monster Factory. Again, a guy who I considered a friend, a guy who has done a lot for me in this industry. And I also would consider that I've done a lot for him in the sense that I've always had his back and I've gone out of my way to support him with his um, business ventures, with doing camps at the Monster Factory, driving to Jersey for little to no money to perform for him, to make his shows better. And I got very little thanks for it. Um, again, someone who I thought was my friend, who the last thing he said to me was fuck off someone who I thought was my friend and I go to give her my condolences and I see that I'm blocked on social media and given absolutely no reason why the time period when both of my dads died I lost both of my fathers my birth father and my stepfather within a 10 day time frame 10 days in those 10 days, four, four people from the pro wrestling industry reached out to me. Four. Dave Hero, 
Bob Holly, Mike Busey, and Ben Manthe. Four people. I was under the impression, and I still believe that I have a lot more friends in this business than four people. But that scenario right there was very enlightening to me as far as who actually thinks of me and my well-being when I'm not standing there with them face to face. And to me, that's the true definition of a friend is someone that doesn't just care about you or play cool to you when you're standing in front of them. It's how they conduct themselves about you when you're not around. And when I'm not around, but it's very public knowledge that I'm going through probably the roughest time in the last 10 years of my life, and somebody and so few people feel the need to reach out to me, it's situations like that that make me hate the pro wrestling industry because it reminds me just how two-faced and fake the majority of the people that I have come across in are in. The, the majority of the people that I have come across in it are. So Jeff Jarrett is quoted for having said, in the pro wrestling industry, you will have a lot of acquaintances and very, very few friends. And the amount of people who I can really consider friends are far and few between. Now, it's not to say that people didn't check up on me. A lot of people checked up on me. One of the promoters who I work for in Lafayette, good guy, Brian Smith, um, he, he, I actually almost had to cancel him because of the fact when... Um, my the day that my dad flatlined I was supposed to be wrestling for him and luckily my dad did not pass away that day he didn't pass away until the following week but he made it a point to let me know before my father even passed away hey reach out to me if you need anything so and you know the people at RCW um, donated $400 to my dad's GoFundMe to help my mother pay for his funeral expenses because they had just gotten married and he didn't have a life insurance policy yet. So when I say four people text me, I mean four people individually text me. More people than that reached out to me throughout the course of the month. But like I said, there were certain people who I considered friends who I expected to hear from who I didn't. And then there were people who I did not expect to hear from who reached out. So it just sucks because something that has given me so much joy my entire life is slowly becoming something that I can't stand to be around anymore. And I hope to God that it doesn't get to the point where I don't want to be part of the business anymore. I'm always going to love pro wrestling. I'm always going to love watching it. I'm always going to love discussing it with people. But I really hope I don't get pushed to the point where I just don't want to be in it anymore because of the way that things are nowadays. I was telling Mike Busey today that um, I feel like I came up two generations too late and that I would have thrived in the 90s and 2000s. But right now it's just not my time. So. People understand how you feel when you lose a parent. They don't know what to say, so they don't say anything at all. That's one way of looking at it. Um, me, personally, if I see that somebody loses somebody like that, typically what I will say is, hey, you don't have to reply. Nothing I say is going to make you feel better. Just know that I'm here. And some people reached out and said that. Most didn't, so I would rather have heard from somebody and not had to respond than not have heard nothing at all. So, oh boy, I got a lot of news coming in from my coach. I'm getting ready to be seven weeks out as of Saturday, so we're really starting to drop the hammer on getting lean, so... I'm actually very interested to see everything that he's saying, so I'm going to go ahead and cut this video short.
Actually, I'm not really cutting it short. I've said everything that I've wanted to say. So shoot me any sort of questions. Drop them either in here. Sorry about your dad, Nick. I would. I, would. I think he might have been cut off, Eric. Um, but thank you very much for your condolences. Um, you've had a lot on your plate. I understand that recovering from COVID. So you're not one of the people that I'm thinking of when I say that I expected to hear from certain people and I didn't. Um, I know that you've had a lot to deal with and I'm glad that you're recovering. Shoot me any sort of training inquiries into my DMs, guys, for personal training and online coaching. Remember, follow me on Instagram at Absolute Answer, Twitter at Cutler Coalition, supplementation at GasparriNutrition.com, promo code NHARMON20, merchandise at ProWrestlingTees.com forward slash Cutler Coalition. And until next time, I love you too, Melissa. Have a good night, chat. Everybody, stay color strong.